Good afternoon. My name is Per Erik Melander. I'm a researcher in the Agricultural Catchment Program in Chagask, based in Johnson Castle in Wexford. I'm here going to present the Agricultural Catchment Program, a decade of agroenvironmental studies. And in this presentation, I'll give an overview of my conceptual understanding built up over the years together with the team. The program started in 2008 and it's currently in its fourth cycle of funding from the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. We collaborate with over 300 farmers in six catchments across Ireland. And we're a large team of the scientists, farm advisors, technologists and technicians. The main objectives of the program are to monitor the effectiveness of the good agricultural practice measures for compliance with the nitrate directives. I also want to provide scientific basis for policy reviews and to monitor the influence of derogation farming, that is stocking rates higher than 170 kilos of livestock manure nitrate per hectare and year. We use the nutrient transfer continuum as a conceptual framework. That is, we study nutrients at their source, how they may be mobilized and transferred via different pathways and delivered to water where they can have a negative impact on the aquatic ecology. The experimental design is also largely built on the nutrient transfer continuum and on the source and mobilization, we collect information on management directly from the farmers and the soils are sampled on a field by field basis every four years. For the transfer, since nutrients follow hydrological pathways, the weather is a key driver. And each catchment has a weather station in the central lowlands and an additional rain gauge at the higher grounds. We also have high resolution digital elevation models based on LIDAR surveys. And these provide information on the surface pathways. And for below, below ground pathways, we have focused study sites consisting of multi-level monitoring wells in hill slopes. And these are equipped with level loggers that we can uh, monitor the, the groundwater levels. And we also sample them on a monthly basis for uh, chemical analysis. And at these focused study sites, we also have conducted geophysical surveys to build up 2D geological model. Then for the delivery, stream discharge and water quality parameters are monitored in the catchment outlets every 10 minutes. And the outlets are also equipped with sensors to monitor nitrate N concentration, total organic carbon, electrical conductivity, turbidity, and temperatures. And samples are automatically taken and analyzed with wet chemistry for total phosphorus and total reactive phosphorus, all on a 10 minute basis. We also take grab samples on a monthly basis along the river network. And some catchments are also equipped with passive samplers in the outlet uh, for analysis of a suite of uh, 18 herbicides. And then for the impact, an ecological survey is made along several sites in all the catchment rivers in May and September to look at uh, the macroinvertebrates and diatoms. And the strength is that we have the same experimental design across all the catchments. So here are the six catchments that we monitor within the program. These were selected to represent intensively managed agricultural land in different physical settings and also for different dominating land uses. And for that reason also for different types of riskiness of N and P loss. The catchment size was also chosen to be large enough to include a range of hydrological conditions, but also a range of farm practices within typical farming systems still small enough to engage with the farmers at each catchment. And here in the little boxes below the photos, you can see the 10 year annual average of concentrations of the total reactor phosphorus and nitrate N. And the boxes have been color coded green for low and red for too high, according to the environmental quality standards. And the catchments with too high nitrate and phosphorus concentrations in the water have this for very different reasons and this didn't fully match our initial expectations, and that is what I now will be focusing on. So this is the loss of nitrate N in grams per millimeter of rain. And, and uh, this is over 10 years in six catchments. 
So if the landscape was homogeneous, the nutrient losses would be directly linked to the source loadings. But as you can see, the loss of nitrate N per millimeter of rain here varies highly between the catchments. And this is the organic N loading in the same period. And there is no clear link to what is coming into the catchment and what is leaving. And the same holds for phosphorus. For example, the source loading is very similar in the two catchments with the highest and lowest loss. So we need to recognize that the controls in the landscape and, and be aware that these may override the source pressures. The Irish agricultural landscape has many soil types and landscape features and a complex geology and different types of land use. And there are physical controls and these are mainly soil and bedrock permeability and also topography and will influence the pathway and the storage and transfer times and connectivity. There are also chemical uh, controls and this will influence the mobilization and sorption and speciation and transformations of, of the nutrients. And then we have biological controls, which influence the fixation and uptake of nutrients. So here's an example of the influence of physical controls, comparing total phosphorus loss between two catchments. One catchment is dominated by poorly drained soils and the other by well-drained soils. For the same stream flow, it's more than twice the phosphorus loss in the catchment with poorly drained soils, despite similar soil P sources. There was also no, uh, a higher variability within the catchment with poorly drained soils than between the catchment. And that catchment responds also quicker to weather changes. So this is an example of hydrology overriding the source pressure. There is also a large seasonal variability and here's an example of total phosphorus loss in kilos per hectare and day for the catchments with well-drained soils and during a dry condition and saturated conditions. There is a substantial higher loss in winter. And this is one of the reasons why Ireland has a close period for spreading in winter. And the other reason is uh, that there is no growth uptake of nutrients in that time. And there are large offsets with big rain events on saturated and bare soils. And this can become quite substantial. But it's not only about rainfall to run off partitioning. There are also chemical controls. And here's a comparison of uh, phosphorus mobilization in two catchments, both with well-drained soils, but one with iron-rich soils and the other with aluminium-rich soils. For the same soil phosphorus concentrations, there are higher water soluble phosphorus in the iron rich catchment. And iron rich soils favors phosphorus into soluble form. And while phosphorus loss is mostly associated to surface runoff, the catchment with iron rich soils here had three times higher phosphorus loss via below ground pathways than the catchments with aluminium rich soils. The soil chemistry can work in the other direction too and retain phosphorus. And here's a spring uh, zone with thin soils. And the soils are rich in calcium and aluminium that can retain the phosphorus. So despite relative, relatively high source pressures and also thin soils and over a thousand karst features in this area, the phosphorus concentration in the main spring are well below the ecological and environmental quality standards. And the soil and bedrock retention capacity explain the good water quality in Craigdoff Spring Zone. So we use this to develop new concepts for a phosphorus vulnerability map, which reduced the vulnerability area from initially 97% to 14%. And this better matched what we were monitoring in the catchment outlets. So they are both agronomic drivers and weather drivers for nutrient loss to water. And we're experiencing large changes in both. Agriculture is a large part of the Irish economy and we're producing more and more food. Ireland exports food to over 175 countries. But also the weather is intensifying with climate change. 
In Ireland, we are experiencing warmer summers, wetter winters, and more extreme weather events. So if we first look at the intensifying agronomy, two of the catchments have seen a large increase in the stocking rates during our monitoring, but the influence of nutrient loss was very different depending on the controls. So while higher N and P concentrations were detected in smaller subcatchments with higher stocking rates, in other subcatchments with poorly drained soils, there was no higher concentrations found in, in areas with higher stocking rates. So if you see in the graph here, the green marks uh, are N concentrations in uh, subcatchments with low stocking rates, and the reds uh, are subcatchments with high stocking rates. So the black line is the whole catchment um, in the outlet. In another catchment, there has been a large increase in the phosphorus index for soils. And that is soils with the phosphorus exceeding the agronomical optimum. And there were high phosphorus concentrations in all the pathways in this catchment and plenty of room for improvement. For example, good farm scale nutrient management is needed to improve the spatial distribution of nutrients. We have also witnessed the effect of an intensified weather. And Ireland's weather is highly influenced by a large weather systems such as the North Atlantic Oscillation. And this is driven by a high pressure cell over the source and a low pressure cell over Iceland. And the intensity of these is expressed by an index. So a positive index typically means warmer summers followed by winters with more large rain events. And here's the time series of the annual average uh, in North Atlantic Oscillation Index since the 50s. And during the period that, that our program has been monitoring water quality, you can see here that has been a sharp increase in the NAO index. And changes occurring to rainfall intensity and temperature patterns have been found. And these are important drivers for nutrient mobility in soils. So, the annual average N and P concentrations were found to correlate to the changes in the North Atlantic Oscillation Index. These are annual averages of concentrations of N and P uh, over 10 years correlated to the index. But the response to this was different for different catchment typologies. So whether changes may override local management Climate change also include more frequently occurring extreme weather that impacts the pollutant patterns. For example, periods of uh, rain-induced mutant flux, as seen to the left here, where two large rain events in November 2014 caused severe surface runoff on bare arable fields. And loss of total phosphorus was equal to the annual average phosphorus loss for the catchment. Or periods of drought-induced end loss uh, causing elevated end concentrations during the rains in November after a severe summer drought in 2018. So influence of long-term weather shifts and short-term weather extremes both need concentration. Finally, here are monthly average nitrate and phosphorus concentrations over 10 years in three of the catchments. And interesting is that there is some seasonality in the data and there are also large differences between the catchments that matches our conceptual understanding. With the man kennel trend analysis, we found no interannual trend in some parameters and catchments. And the phosphorus concentration in casadocral catchments were stable over the 10 years. While nitrate N and total reactor phosphorus in Balakanu and nitrate N concentrations in Timo League has increased over 10 years. However, there are also interseasonal trends. And the interannual trends are sometimes not reflected by the interseasonal trends and are also sometimes influenced by changes in only some of the month per year. Specific months may influence or even counteract interannual trends. And it may also be specific transfer pathways that may dominate the trend in certain months. But this is work in progress. 
So to summarize, there are critical areas, critical times, and critical pathways for Newton laws. Physical and chemical controls and weather can override the source pressures. So there are no clear links found between Newton concentrations in the streams and the source pressures within the ACP catchments. And there are no one-size-fits-all solutions for mitigation strategies. Intensifying agronomic and weather pressures both need consideration. And finally, long-term high-resolution monitoring of baseline conditions is needed to provide a process-based understanding of neutral loss to water in the agricultural landscape. And the ACP catchments can be seen as sensors responding to changing pressures in different ways. So we can learn from these and scale up our knowledge to larger catchments. So thank you very much for listening.